Back again. Oh, sure. Oh, French. I squallow him. And wow. I'll commune him. I'll commune him, yeah. And hello. And hello, English. <laughs> <laughs> we'll stick to English. Okay. Although I was raised in a uh, in a household where my mother spoke fluent French, ah. but not in the house. Ah. Why is that? I think the story is that. Uh, my father didn't speak French at all, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so she felt it was rude mm-hmm. to speak French when somebody couldn't, somebody present couldn't understand what she was saying. It's understandable, and yet you know today, when we're so politically correct and everybody gets to keep their culture, um, like a lot of things back in the '50s, '60s, we did things differently. Yeah, uh, particularly women. Yeah, tending to determine who they were by who they got married to. Yeah. 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 Interesting. Uh, Which this is, this is great because I wanted to actually kind of interview you today. Way cool. I thought it would be fun. I hope I'm interesting. Uh, I think you're very interesting. (laughs) And, and uh, a little bit selfish. I want to interview from the point of view of um, being a minister in a congregation Mm. and how that plays out. Mm Mm-hmm. And something we've never really quite discussed, and I don't think, I think this is something that maybe a lot of our congregants, people in the community wouldn't even know, is I was thinking this morning, how did you manage COVID? I pretty much ignored it. Okay. Yeah. (laughs) I I know there's that side, but there was still regulation. There were still things. There were still people's expectations. There were those that were on one side of the fence Mm -hmm. and on the other side of the fence. And you had to, you actually had to navigate. I did. All of us through that. So, And and not only at Unity Vancouver Island, but at that time I was president of Unity Canada. And I was getting emails from all across the country demanding either that I demand people get vaccines or demanding that they outlaw vaccines. And it was, uh, it was difficult for me to, to deal with those because I didn't know what to say. Uh, but we talked about it at the board level and we prayed about it. And we came to the realization that it was not our place to tell people what choices to make. It was our place to remind people that they had the power and the, and the obligation to make choices that work for them. Right. Um, and so we never did take a stand on it. And, and there were unity centers throughout the country that did one way or the other. It, it was interesting. Um, but through that, you know, we survived that and we still love each other. Um, I may have lost one couple because I wouldn't insist that people had vaccines. Um, but I, I was true to myself. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, and so, I, I mean, I can say from my point of view that I thought you you managed it beautifully because it seems to me that you took a, a hard stand that I'll follow government regulation. If I have to. If yes. I have to, that that's <laughs> yeah. Yeah. that's my tipping point. Is yeah. it, it's not up to me to, to make rules and regulations right. for how people should show up, which you just covered, but you kind of left it that I would I would follow government regulation and do my best to, to implement those and... and and support people in supporting that yes. initiative. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and so I, I did want to get to that. So in terms of, and we don't need to talk about whether people come or don't come because of your stand on that, but mm-hmm. as somebody who's running a ministry mm-hmm. where you are relying on donations <laughs> from people mm-hmm. in order to function. Yes, bingo. And, yeah. and somebody who might be like, well, I give a lot of money here. Yeah. And I want it done this way, or I'm going to leave. How do you, how do you manage that? You know, I, I go back to the, the COVID thing. It's our job to love everybody, no matter what position they take. It's the same as true of their financial uh, consciousness. Some people, 
you know, are very prosperous and have a consciousness of prosperity and put their tithing at the top of their, what I must pay every, you know, there's my food and my rent and my tithe. Others, well, it's, if I have any left over, um, and I have to love them all ways and not be influenced by that if I know about that, Mm -hmm. um, because everybody is just there for me to help, to guide, to love. Right. To so teach if, what I can. So if I'm hearing this correctly, then from your point of view, um, there's the human side where you think, uh, where you might be thinking, I don't want to put words in your mouth, where you might be thinking, I think you could do a better job of this if you followed these principles. Of course. And the reality of, I have to let people be who they are and, and let go of that judgment, even though that might be there for you. It's like a one room schoolhouse. There's grade one level, and there's grade eight level, and there's post-grad level, and we're all in the same room. Right. We're all learning the same lessons over and over and over again. Yeah. yeah. Right. So kind of like the, this, even though we're <laughs> doing the spiral, we're coming back to a new a version of the same yeah. lesson, yeah, exactly. right? It's just a new version yeah. of it. Yeah. That's a great way. That's a great yeah. way to think of it. So, so then for you, as a leader and a minister who's, you know, well, let's back up a bit. So when you think of your role here at Unity Vancouver Island, what is your job? Oh, goodness. Not, um, not, the, what, not the duties that you do, because uh, there's a whole bunch of things that might fall in your lap that maybe yes. aren't really, you can yeah. look at and go, should I really be doing this mm-hmm. or shouldn't I? But what is your job? How you see it? My job really is to empower others to take my job. Kind of like a doctor. Is that, is that what happened to me? His ultimate aim is to make themselves obsolete. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes, indeed. Um, okay. And to remind people that they don't need an intermediary, an intercessionist. I don't know. Yeah. They don't need somebody coming between them and spirit. Right. They just need somebody to remind them that they already know all that good stuff. And it's all about knowing who you are and taking full responsibility. So mm-hmm. thank you for that. Yeah. And so when you're thinking about that in terms of, I guess you're the spiritual director mm-hmm. of the organization. Well, that's interesting because now that's an official term and you have to take in the three-year course to become a spiritual director, okay. spiritual leader. Perhaps. So you're, you're, yeah. so you're in charge of the, the yeah. spiritual outcomes of, right. uh, or maybe the, the spiritual, not the outcomes, nope. but maybe, uh, the spiritual overview. Yes. Of what Unity Vancouver yeah. Island is going to focus on, yeah. mm-hmm. or the intentions that we're going to be setting out there, or if somebody's going to speak on a Sunday or not, right. where are they coming from in order right. to ensure that there's some kind of yes. spirituality that relates to what we're to the fact that we're a unity center mm-hmm. and and to be a spokesperson in the greater community, um, I'm supposed to sort of approve all advertising and that kind of thing. Right, um, and it's always a fine balance between empowering people t- to take as much as they can, um, and watching them. I had a minister once who used to say, "It's your baby, you rock it," as opposed to the people who come to me and say, "I know what you should do." You know, find find that balance. Just mm-hmm. what's mine to do and what's mine to to delegate. That's yeah. right, right. Well, I I don't. I don't remember who I was speaking to recently, but we were on the conversation of you Mm -hmm. as a leader Mm -hmm. here and as a spiritual leader. And from, you know, from my perspective, and I, and I don't know if I've shared this with the congregation at all and at all, but I'm going to now that as somebody who was training and is still in training Mm -hmm. and development to, to be a minister, uh, the, The hands-off approach that you granted me Mm -hmm. and still do has been remarkable when I compare it to what some of my fellow students didn't Mm -hmm. experience. I was basically, for those that don't know, given the keys to the castle and just been like, well, go do it. Well, you're training to be a a minister. The least I can do is give you the opportunity to practice. Uh, And as you say, I mean, a lot of people... Some of these big mega churches, they have maybe 10, 12 ministers. Some of them almost never get to speak. Um, and and a lot, yet a lot of people think that's all a minister 
does. Right. I used to uh, moonlight as a medical transcriptionist and, and uh, worked from home, and I was always getting calls from them to take on more hours, take on more hours. And I'd say, but I've got a job. And they'd say, but that's only on Sunday morning. And it's like, you know, a lot of people think that. Yeah. And it's, yeah. So I also want to add that at no point, and this is, this is as I've reflected on this, mm-hmm. at no point in the last five and a half, six years, have you ever come to me and said, you can't do that, or you can't talk about that, or you shouldn't do X, Y, and Z. What you have done um, as my minister is you have counseled me. So fortunately, I've had the feeling of an open door policy. Mm -hmm. I can come to you about anything that's going on with me, whether I'm angry at the world. (laughs) Yes, I remember that. Yes, or you know whatever (laughs) it is I'm angry at. And you've given me counsel, but you've never told me what I can or can't be in terms of being a minister. And I, and I, I was thinking about that. I was like, that's kind of weird in a way that I've never have been schooled is the word I'm looking for. I've never actually been schooled by you to right. be like, Thomas, you can't and you shouldn't and shame on you. Well, you know, when you first came to me and said you were considering being a minister and I asked you, I said, so would your ultimate goal be to, to take over it? here at Unity of Nanaimo, as it then was, and you said to me, oh, I don't think a pulpit ministry will be big enough for me. And I said, okay, <laughs> okay, you know, lead me into the new century. Um, no, because you're, you're a generation younger than I am, and it's, you know. That's such a Thomas it's a, thing it's I a, it's said. It's a good transition. <laughs> it's not big enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you have to have confidence. Right. And now I see the weight of it. This is why I wanted to talk to you today, actually, about this, because I see, I've seen the weight of something that came out of left field like COVID. And you, how do you manage that? Mm-hmm. How, do you, how do you not lose your grounding and your truth when everything else around you is falling apart and people mm-hmm. are suffering, people are making demands? How do you stay? Well, that's why it's so necessary <clears throat> for people in leadership to keep up their own spiritual practice. I mean, you know, I have days when I get up and don't, don't want to get up. Um, wouldn't call it depression, but there's some days I can't find too much to be happy about, but meditation, prayer, mm-hmm. reading, talking to someone. Right. You, know, you have to keep your own spirituality geared up. Yeah. Right. And so is that a practice for you daily, meditation and prayer? You know, not necessarily. Um, I, I go into meditation whenever I think about it. I don't have like every, th- every morning first thing. Every morning first things, I have to let the dogs out, you know. But when I think about meditating, when I'm writing talks, I often stop and just meditate and the rest of this talk comes. Um, take the dogs out for a walk in nature and look around. Um, so yeah, no, I'm not a a rigid person about my spiritual practice, but I'm well. It's, I think what Jesus said, "Pray without ceasing," and that's right. kind of what I'm aiming for: is to be conscious on some level at all the time, right. so that there's yeah. always a presence within yeah. you of that. Yeah. That's that's interesting because I, I have found over the last year that my rigidity that I must do this when I get out of mm-hmm. it's gone. I don't. Mm-hmm. I don't feel that way. I actually feel more like I I do it every day. Yeah. There's a time every single day where I have that pause. It's right. usually in the morning. Mm-hmm. I like to do it before I get out and face the world because it grounds me. But it's not like it used to be when I was really training myself, I think. That's kind of how it occurred is yeah. I was actually, I'm training and developing, mm-hmm. so I need to do it. Yeah. Whereas now I feel like, no, I want to do it every day because yeah. I need it. Like yeah. I do. I really feel that presence that I want to get in there, but it doesn't have to be as soon as I get out of bed. It, it can be, you know, after I've had my coffee. When an annoying email comes in, t- t- time to sit, you know, right. <laughs> after, after you breathe. Breathing, breathing is my first thing when I get discombobulated right just breathe and i only need to do it once before that reminds me Mm. how i need to look at it from here instead of within it you know right yeah don't don't bang the microphone so you brought up a good point or a good 
place for me to to think about, which was when does that when that annoying email comes in, when that person because for it's kind of like and correct me if I'm wrong, it's kind of like if you're the leader of a congregation, you have customers. They're congregants, mm-hmm. but really they're customers yeah, in customers. a way. Yeah. And you need to manage that as mm-hmm. if they're customers. So how, when an annoying email comes in, when somebody just won't let something go, when they this like, how do you manage yourself? Well, fortunately, I have a very good friend in the house that I can walk over and say, oh, <laughs> and then I go sit down and I, I write a very tactful letter, I think, you know, um, and the mile in the other man's moccasins. What would, if if I had this point of view, how would I like to be responded to? Mm. So uh, first of all, let's put my preferences and judgments aside and see where that email is really coming from. Right. Yeah. So you you you've trained yourself to take. A break. Oh yes. Take a space. Oh yes. <laughs> Take to maybe I shouldn't write. Maybe I'll write. Maybe I'll answer this tomorrow. Yes, that's right. <laughs> I, th- I think most people have done that. Yeah. 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 Well, it took me a long time to get to that Are place. You but heat of the moment. It, well, no, no, I not anymore. No, okay. no, I definitely don't feel heat. Of, I actually don't have a lot of heat of the moment. If anything, I have the, uh, I have the embarrassment more of what did I do wrong. Hmm. much more than oh well, maybe he's right yeah yeah, yeah that's yeah. that's that's where i need and then i need to take a step back and and really yeah. be clear on what my responsibility is in it versus what they might be trying to put on me yeah cuz i i'm willing to take the fall in a lot of cases and i don't want like uh, so mm. i'll get anxious and i'll think oh, i failed this is i'm so i can't believe i did i'll go through that much more than i'll get angry at somebody yeah. But that's the unity teaching. I mean, the positive side is you have absolute power in your life. The negative side is you did it. You're responsible for it. Right. Even for the person who sends you a nasty email. In some way, you created that happening. Right. You know, so. so the thinking then on your part, if I could put words in your mouth, okay. is, if, is, is, is this. Is if it showed up in my life, how am I responsible like what can what can I take from so it's really you could almost look at it as it's a growth it's a learning growth opportunity everything yeah. every time because you're gonna go through whatever you're gonna go through and then you need to step forward and deal with it yeah quite simple isn't it really yeah are there times not you just, easy but simple are there times you just don't want to deal with it yep sometimes I say I think. I think I'll retire at the end of the year. And the next thing I know, I'm taking on a new project. So, yeah. And then, you know, I, this is advice everyone has given me. They say a minister should always take two days off in a row every week. And I have never done that. Hmm. Um, I never take a day off, but I take time off every day. Oh. So, like, I work Saturday, I work Sunday, but it's... I probably average four or five hours a day every day. So it's equivalent to taking a couple of days, but that's what works for me. Right. It's just when I feel I'm going to walk away from here. Yeah. I do take the time. Yeah, yeah that's interesting. I, I, being self, has self-employed as long as I have, I have found that there really isn't a time where I'm not working. Yeah. Say, because I'm passionate about what I do, so mm-hmm. it's not really work. Yeah. It's part of my life. Yeah. And I also know there's times where I don't want to deal with anything, and I don't. I, I mean, you know that. There's times I don't answer head your emails. The, head, head under the covers. Yeah, I'm just like, yeah, I saw your email. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got nothing to say right now. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that, that's, a, that's a good... And I, I don't think this is peculiar to ministers, it's leaders of every sort, and, and every person, really. Right. All right, so I'm going to ask the big question now. Uh-oh. This is the really big one. And I'm not coming at this from a place of my needs, but you mentioned the word retirement. I did. You've mentioned it to me Off a few on. times over yeah. the years. Yeah. Where, what is, what is that, what does Unity of Vancouver Island look like for you right now? Where, where are you at? I know, you've, you know you're stepping back from question. Unity Canada, right? Yes, I have done that. Right. Um, I'm working on... Um, 
I'm not a great delegator, so I'm working on delegating more things to teams. Um, you know, someone said to me, a minister should really only be interacting with 12 people in the congregation. I don't like that analogy, you know, the top going down and branching out. Um, but I could have stopped doing little administrative things that somebody else could do. Uh, and I have nobody but to blame myself for that. And to, to do the things that I really enjoy doing, mm. um, which are things like putting together the Christmas program or <laughs> purchasing a new building, you know, <laughs> little things like that. <laughs> little minor details. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, but no, I honestly don't know. Right. I, every day, Spirit tells me whether to go to work or not, mm-hmm. and so far I have. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I... I think I can speak for a lot of people here that we're not looking for you to go anytime soon. Well, you know, there are a lot of New Thought ministers who have died in office at age 86. Um, I'm not sure that's a good idea, but certainly wouldn't be groundbreaking. Right. Yeah. Right. Because never something you never stop doing what unity is about. So. Yeah, how, and so I... So on that note, like if, mm-hmm. if you did retire, mm-hmm. what would you do? <laughs> That's my question. I'm going to sit home and watch daytime TV. Like, <laughs> and what would you do on Sundays? I'd probably come to, come to church, Unity. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'll wait night. I'll ride along on the white horse and sweep me off my feet and take me to the Hawaii or something. Right. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> well, I know for me, you've been a absolute blessing in my life and the way you the way you operate here at um, UVI Unity Vancouver Island is uh, is a great uh, demonstration for me and for others of what leadership looks like what ministry can look like and um, and what allowing people to be mm. can really look like because that's that's also another thing I've noticed is um, and we've had, you and I talk a lot about stuff and people that might, you know, interfere with our thinking. <laughs> we've, we've had conversations about that. And I'm not talking about just people here, but people in general, oh, right? Yeah. In, in our personal lives that it's like, ah, why is this? Um, but yet you always find a way to just allow people to be who they are. And you come back to a place of allowing people to be who they are. What... What is it, if there was one, what is it that grounds you in that, do you think? Hmm. I guess it's just that realization that if it's all up to me over here, ultimately it's all up to you over there. Um, You're the boss of you. Mm. Um, You know, I think back to when I, had kids, and a particular stepchild who told me he wanted to be a pilot. And I, in my wisdom, knew that he didn't have the brains, academic brains. And so I, I put him down. Oh, well, you know, you know, and, and I could just civilly said, what a great plan, you know? And I, I think we do that to our kids a lot and just let them find their own way works better that way mm. um, but with people too whether I th- whether I think they're doing it right or wrong I'm probably not going to change their decision making process and how they get where they're going right I don't know yeah I, I like that I don't think that was the question but okay no it, 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 it is and I like that it's whether whether I think they're doing it right or wrong they are yeah. like whatever <laughs> right whatever it is they're they're doing it right or they're doing it wrong yeah. that's exactly what they're doing yeah. and Um, yeah. And I think the more that we can as individuals lead from that place of allowing people to be who they are, which doesn't mean you allow them to hurt others. It doesn't mean you allow them to hurt themselves, right? At some point, maybe you need to step in and offer some guidance, but there's a lot of times where we could just allow people to be who they are, which is, this is perfect as we are in November for release again, right? We talked about it last week, but like that is part of that release is Mm -hmm. letting go of what, of how I think it should be or how I think you should be. Ultimately, people just need to be heard. Mm. 
you know, and we want to, we want to fix them. We, that, that's why when, whenever we have like a, a small group, we have ground rules, which is you don't cross talk when somebody else is talking and you don't offer advice. You don't fix each other, mm. just eat there to hear each other. And when we're heard, usually we then have, are, are empowered to make our right decisions. Yeah. When we can actually, when somebody's actually listening to us, I, f- I have found this fascinating as I went through uh, spiritual counsel training was that if you are truly listening to somebody and in a place of listening, they then get to speak and they actually can listen to themselves and then the answers come to yeah. them. Yeah. Because when you speak into the world, you know what you're, you know, you can hear it when you say something. Oh, that's, that's, there's many times you and I have had talks even just here where right. I've like, stuff has come out of my mouth and I was like, oh, that's pretty dumb. <laughs> like, don't think I ever want to phrase it that way again. Right. But then I learned for next time, I mm. can I can say that a little bit differently, right? right? Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Any, uh, is there anything that you wish for in terms of Unity Vancouver Island? Do you have wishes? Do you have things that you would, <laughs> yeah. besides the building? Cool. Yeah, that was the one you got me. Yeah. <laughs> that was it. I, I just like to be settled. Right. Yeah. But we, mm, perfect order, perfect time. Let it go. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for doing this with me. Thank you. I thank don't have any other questions. Thank you for saying all those nice things right back at you. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a pleasure.